We met with Minister Brad Duguid, who's the Minister of Economic Development and Infrastructure, and we explained a lot of our infrastructure needs, that we and we will be seeking another meeting with him to talk about economic development in our community. Brad, as well, has been in our community a couple of times, being a former Minister of uh, Aboriginal Affairs. We also met with Minister Yasir Navki, who from, who is the Minister of Community Safety and Corrections. He, um, he wanted to talk about policing and we explained the need for more uh, funding for our police service and how we need an, in, uh, an increase in the number of police officers that we have for a community of our size. I, as I mentioned, all of these ministers have indicated a desire to visit our community, so I will be following up with them to organize these visits. We also had the Regional Director General of Indian Affairs uh, visit with Council. Her name is Set Howlett and she's responsible for the fe from the federal side. Uh, she attended a meeting with Council with several of her staff and we met with them mainly to outline some of our concerns about the funding cuts that are being made. You know, uh, Indian Affairs is always saying we're going to cut this O&M funding, we're going to cut that. So um, it wasn't a bad meeting. We felt it was kind of productive and uh, we will ensure that we follow up with her, with her on some of the commitments that were made. We also talked about education because Indian Affairs is still uh, giving the push to try and um, get us to assume community control of education. So we, we, are, we did ask them if they could provide uh, some funding to us to, to hire a consultant or somebody that could, could help us put, put together a proposal on what that might look like. <clears throat> I also had the opportunity to meet with a reporter from the Canadian press. He, uh, he is a new reporter there who is going to be focusing on Aboriginal issues. And uh, it was a, and, you know, it's welcoming to see that a reporter wanted to come and talk to us about what issues she should focus on uh, before he starts writing them. So, uh, you know, we were really open to meet with him. I, I met with him along with our communications officer, Chelsea Johnson, and, and Phil Montour uh, on our land rights. So uh, he was seeking advice, as I said, on what issues to write. And so he said he did commit to do a series on our land rights struggle, which he will do in the, in the near future, and that will be on Canadian Press, which is ca carried by a number of newspapers. On March 4th, I attended a, a ceremony at Wilfrid Laurier University where several scholarships were presented to, to students that are attending um, Wilfrid Laurier. Uh, on, I also met with some of the families further to the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women event that we attended in Thunder Bay in February. We wanted to begin discussions about events that we could do at Six Nations to bring more awareness to the whole missing and murdered Indigenous women and, and men issue and also to help prevent violence in our community. Derek Miller, our, yeah, we all know Derek Miller, our Juno Award winner and blues singer, he's also very involved in this and uh, Eileen Joseph and I met with him as well last week and he's quite concerned and he's doing a series of concerts across the country to raise awareness about missing and murdered women and to raise funds in a public campaign. Uh, he's starting off with, a, I think, a concert in Winnipeg in April, and he wants to end up with a big telethon as well in October. Either he's not sure where that's going to be yet. But we uh, said that we would like to have one of those concerts here at Six Nations, and so we picked a date uh, on July 18th, and Derek will perform in the, at that concert. So we're going to start building plans around that, um, that event. So save that date, and we will provide more information as the date gets closer. I also did a short uh, TV interview with Napam TV. Um, they were in the office the last week and they asked me to uh, make a few comments on Bill C-10 and what we saw wrong with it. Last week we also had Dr. Cindy Blackstock in our community talking about uh, the, um, the uh, child welfare case that is going up before the human rights and she's hoping that um, they will win that case which, which will really make a difference with respect to child welfare. The main focus of that case is that there is a great big disparity between the funding that is provided with respect to child welfare for on-reserve kids as opposed to off-reserve kids. Uh, the event was very well attended. It was, uh, there was like over 200 people there and not only our staff but a lot of visitors uh, came to listen to, Ms., uh, to Dr. Blackstock including Speaker Dave Levac. He was there to hear it and, he, and I saw him after that and he was quite interested.